Hello everyone, welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel and welcome to Watkins Glen where we're going to be doing this week's iRacing Touring Car Challenge Track Guide Series. Now Watkins Glen always offers incredible racing no matter what series races here and the Touring Cars and Watkins Glen has got to be one of the best combinations on iRacing. Now if you've followed my track guides before you'll know that they are not a place just for hot laps it's a slow methodical approach where i talk about my braking markers my reference points and the little quirks that each circuit has then at the end we'll talk about pit entry pit exit and where i think you might be able to overtake this week at watkins glen now as usual i will show you a flying lap in full then we'll jump in the car do a few laps and show you those braking markers and reference points in action so enough talking let's get on track So here we are then on the main street here at Watkins Glen. So as usual, we've set the sim time to match the official series. So it's the 1st of April 2022 and the time in the sim is 12 noon. We're also using the iRacing Sprint setup, which is what is used in the official series. Track temperature right now is 42 degrees Celsius, exactly the same as it was in the flying lap that you've just seen. And brake bias, we've gone right down to 42.5%. Now, the reason I've gone that low is to try and save a bit of front tyre wear. Now, with the brake bias being lower, we don't need to brake as hard. I found myself really braking hard with the default brake bias, so around about 45, I was braking too hard and generating too much heat at the front end. So 42.5 degree uh, percent, it's a little bit more sketchy on turning if you're braking hard, but if you, if you control it and you don't brake as hard, you're gonna be much better off throughout the whole race. So, Turn one, we're going to be approaching it on the left-hand side. Sorry, just to mention, you've got my uh, split deltas there on screen so you can compare them to yours. So we're going to be approaching turn one on the left-hand side. You're going to be up into fifth gear and we're going to be braking just before the 200 board. Now, you can brake a bit later, but turn one, it's all about momentum because you want a really, really good run out for the run through turns two, three and four. So the exit here is much more important than the entry. So we're going to be braking just before the 200, nice and controlled, staying to the left, and we're going to be going down into third gear. And we're going to be a little bit patient on the throttle here. Then when you're on the apex, you can get on the gas. You can run across these curbs, but don't run any wider than this really, because you will get an off track. And then 
these two turns here now turn well three turns two turns two three and four are actually really important you don't really want to have too much steering angle on going up the hill because the more steering angle you have on the more speed you are scrubbing off so you need to try and straight line these as much as you possibly can so i hold a nice tight line around turn number two and this is where you really need to straight line them and at the end of the curb on the right hand side just as you enter the bit where the white line is you're going to start slowly turning left nice and smooth here be really really smooth and then when you get here we're going to be aiming straight ahead and kissing the curb on the right with your right tires try and straight line that as much as you can it's actually quite important the straight line speed now the run up to the bus stop chicane now this is critical because you need to position your car at a certain point when you start turning left into the bus stop so we're going to be using the 300 board there there's a you can see there's a guy standing next to it so it looks definitely different to the 400 board so just look for the one with the orange guy stood next to it that's what you're going to be using just before there we're going to be breaking to about 60 percent initially but pretty much immediately bleeding off the brakes as we turn in now we want to straight line this curb as much as we possibly can so we want to be approaching it here and going right across this curb but then we want to start turning left immediately because we want a nice tight line around this left hander here and you want to be aiming for your tires to cut across this a uh, grey triangular piece of tarmac at the end of the curb there and keep turning left don't straighten your steering keep turning left because you want to hit this the second part this other triangular piece there right across this curb and if you get that right you can open up the steering and then cut across this curb on the right hand side we're going to be in fourth gear here and then we're going to be accelerating and then trail braking ice tight line around here and you can see the telegraph pole on the right hand side there that's our cue to get on the gas if we are holding a nice tight line at this point fourth gear when we get to that telegraph pole we can pretty much floor it and we know we're going to make the turn maybe not on lap one but when your tires are warm the car will run all the way out wide we're going to be in fourth gear up to fifth gear and then on the right hand side here you can see there is a gray piece of asphalt there i don't know what that's there for but that's our reference point for turning into turn number six or braking for turn number six so we're just before there we're going to be on the brakes and we're on a nice tight line around turn number six you can approach it a little bit wide and turn in later but the straight between turn number six and seven isn't that long so you're not really going to be gaining that much from entering it really wide in a late apex so down to third gear a nice tight line around here be patient on the gas and then when you're at the apex you can get on the gas let the car run all the way out wide use this curb on exit up to fourth gear up to fifth gear and then just between the 200 and the 100 we're going to be breaking down into third gear a really nice tight line off the gas then accelerate on the apex let the car run all the way out wide use this little piece of asphalt there then we're going to be up to fifth gear going to turn number eight and the braking marker here is round about the 200 board just after the 200 board we're going to be braking down to third gear now this is where you can use quite a bit of the asphalt on exit you don't get an off track so we're going to be down into third gear trail braking to the apex as soon as you're on the apex you can get on the accelerator and you can let the car run as wide as you want here but bear in mind you need to get it back on before the grass now the run up the hill then we're going to be breaking down to third then down to second but here as we round turn number nine you've got to be very very gentle with the accelerator if you're in second gear in third gear you can pretty much smash the accelerator and it's not going to wheel spin and understeer but in second gear you need to be nice and progressive with the accelerator just so you don't get that understeer as you accelerate and use the curb on the exit then the run up to turn number 10 again which is really important we're going to be accelerating up to fourth gear and turn in at the 100 board and as we turn in we're still on the gas and then we're just going to lift just as we approach the apex and then get back on the gas at the apex the car will run wide you can use around about this much of the track but i wouldn't use any more than that because you will get an off track then back over to the left and then we're going to be braking nice and gentle turning in let the car coast then get on the gas at the apex 
let the car run all the way out wide towards the wall and that's a lap right we'll pick up the pace hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense as we pick up the pace it's up to fifth gear we're braking just before the 200 or just at the 200 nice and controlled nice smooth braking down to third gear it's all about momentum get on the gas at the apex and let the car run all the way out wide here we're going to be turning in nice tight line around turn number two and then at the end of the curb on the right hand side we're going to be slowly starting to transition towards the left again try and straight line this as much as you can try and keep your steering inputs to a minimum there and then when you pass the curb on the right then we can move over to the left now we're going to be looking at the 300 board look for the guy you can see the guy there he is we're going to be straight lining this first part of the chicane down to fourth aiming for that piece of triangular asphalt and then we're going to be trail breaking to the apex wait for the telegraph pole there it is now we can get on the gas up to fifth gear move the car over to the right looking for that little piece of asphalt there it is down into third gear nice and tight be patient and then get on the gas that will run all the way out wide ties is still a little bit cold do it between the 200 and the 100 we're going to be breaking down to third gear nice tight line be patient on the gas there you go now you can accelerate that will run all the way out wide up to fourth of this one we're breaking just after the 200 in between the 200 and the 100 we're going to be breaking down into third gear nice and patient then accelerate on the apex and you can use all of this on the exit move the car back over to the right and then as we approach up the hill down to second gear smooth with your accelerator on exit because it will understeer it will wheel spin there so we're going to be turning in at the 100 fourth gear flat out then we're going to lift then on the gas again at the apex See, we didn't get an off track there again here be really patient if you don't the car will understeer and you'll be in the wall right we'll pick up the pace for one more lap So just at the 200 we're going to be braking nice and smooth think about the exit any more than that and you'll probably get an off track there so nice and smooth at the end of the curb on the right we're going to be moving across to the left again minimal steering inputs at this point and at the end of the curb on the right we're going to start then moving across to the left hand side of the circuit optimal shift point is 6600 rpm in this car we're looking for the guy there he is so we're going to be breaking down to fifth gear down to fourth we're going to be turning and keep turning left and go right across this curb and then we're going to be nice and tight round here telegraph pole accelerate there it is then we can accelerate all the way around up to fifth gear looking for the piece of asphalt on the right hand side we're going to be breaking down into third gear nice and tight get on the gas at the apex car will run wide just keep accelerating in between the 200 and the 100 we're going to be breaking down to third gear nice and tight around here be patient with the throttle there we go now we can accelerate when we're on the apex up to fourth and up to fifth breaking just after the 200 down to third gear patience again here get on the gas at the apex use as much of that on the left as you wish then here we're going to be braking again nice and tight down to second gear nice and progressive with your accelerator as the car will understeer and you'll be on that grass and you'll get a 1x easily so turn it into 100 and we're going to lift then accelerate you can leave it in fourth here if you wish it's fine depends what kind of run you get out of there so there we go so that's a nice steady lap around Watkins Glen uh, what is it? 59.4. So in my flying lap, I got a uh, 58.4. Sorry, wasn't a bad lap that actually. I keep doing that. In the last week's track guide, I got a better lap on my track guide than I did when I was practicing. But a 58.4, not a bad lap around Watkins Glen. It's all about momentum and trying to save the tyres as much as you possibly can. Right, let's talk about pit entry, pit exit, and where I think you might be able to overtake. So pit entry and pit exit first of all now one thing you need to bear in mind when entering the pit at Watkins Glen is pit entry is right after the final turn now you've just got to be careful if somebody's right on your bumper at that point you need to make your intentions known somehow that you're going to be going into the pits 
So we need to hold a nice tight line around turn number 11. And obviously, you're going to be going a lot slower. So it's just around this turn here. We're going to be approaching it as normal. But when we turn in, we're going to be a lot slower here. And if somebody's flying behind you, there's a good chance that you might get rear-ended. So just bear that in mind. And there's the yellow cone. So just at the end of this barrier on the right-hand side, we can brake hard and get the pit limiter on before the yellow cone. 64 kilometers an hour, so it's not too bad here at Watkins Glen. Pit exit at Watkins Glen actually isn't too bad at all. There's the green cone. We can release the limiter. Just bear in mind, keep on the right-hand side of the yellow line. It's easy to get pushed wide there. And then as you exit, pit lane, blue cone. Bear in mind that this is the racing line here now for turn number two. So just keep an eye on your relative, as always. Make sure that you, you yield if there are faster cars coming and just Try and tuck in behind them, going up the hill, you'll be much, much better off. Right, overtaking at Watkins Glen. There's lots and lots of places to overtake. Let's discuss or let's talk about where I think you're probably best getting it done. So, overtaking at Watkins Glen. There are quite a few places to overtake, but you've got to be quite selective when you do it because the draft is always really, really strong. So, we're going to assume, as usual, that people are going to defend and we're going to talk about the alternate lines and where I think you might be better going for the move or you might be better just holding back and waiting. So turn number one. Obviously, if you can get a move done up the inside, great, go for it. But just bear in mind that there's a great big long straight. You're, you're wide open throttle from turn number one right up until the bus stop. So there's a good chance if you go for the move here, then they might pass you again going up the hill. So... I would rather wait until after turn number one unless I had draft from the car in front. So just bear that in mind. So I would rather wait. Think about the exit, turn number one. If they want to defend over here, fine. Just wait. You're, you're much, much better off waiting and trying to get a better exit out of turn number one. And then you can slot in behind them all the way up the hill. Just time it right. Just back off here if you need to because you want to be right on their tail as you exit turn number two and you're going to three and four, you want to be right on their tail at this point. And if you are, then there's a good chance you're going to get the overtake done into the bus stop. Now, where should you go into the bus stop? I personally would rather overtake on the left-hand side here than go for the move on the inside. I think it's much easier to hold it too wide if you're in this position. So that's where I would suggest going for the overtake. They'll probably defend anyway. So I would rather approach it on here. And if you do, then there's a much better chance that you're going to survive. So here, we're going to be holding a really nice tight line around here. We're going to assume we're too wide. And when we get to this point, they're going to have to lift a little bit because they can't hold it wide open there. And if we're here too wide, fine. That's great. We'll just take a nice wide line around here and then get on the accelerator early because we're taking a wider arc. And then we've got the inside line for turn number six. So you're really setting it up into the bus stop. If you get it done into the bus stop and mid bus stop, fine. But if you don't, you can be too wide and you'll get the move done into turn number six. Now the run down to turn number seven, it's really difficult to pass on the outside around turn number seven. You probably won't get it done, but you can set up the overtake around turn eight or going into turn nine here. So they're going to defend. We're going to take a really nice wide line. Think about the exit. We're going to smash the exit. And again, they're going to defend going into turn number eight. They're going to be over here somewhere. Perfect. Because turn number eight has got that massive runoff, which we can use to then overtake into turn number nine. So they're defending here. We're going to take a wide line. But we're going to abuse these track limits here. We're going to go right over here. That puts us on the inside, going into turn number nine. And then it's good night, Vienna. They're not going to hold it around the outside, turn number nine, and the overtake's done. You can go too wide around here. Again, I would much rather hold a wider line around here if we're too wide and have the inside line for turn number 11 because the last place you want to be is on the outside of the final turn, looking directly at that blue wall. That is not pleasant at all. So that would be my advice. You can go for the move into turn number one, but just bear in mind that if you don't have draft, they're likely going to pass you again before you get to the bus stop. Approaching the bus stop on the left-hand side, try and overtake them through there. If you don't get the overtake done in the bus stop, then there's a really good chance 
that you'll be able to hold the outside line around turn number five, overtake them into turn number six. Failing that, get a really good run out of turn number seven. Outside line around turn number eight. Use those, abuse those track limits, that extra run off, and then overtake them into turn number nine. So there we go. That's Watkins Glen boot done. Please let me know down below in the comments how you get on. What were your times before the guide and what were your times after? Did I help? Did I cover everything that you wanted to be covered in a track guide? As always, thank you for watching. Good luck. Keep it pinned.